Hi, how's it going? I'm Mari and I usually make travel videos, but today I'm going to do something a little different. It's a DIY screen printing tutorial. Full disclosure, I actually haven't done this before, but you're going to do it with me, so let's see how this goes. But first of all, the materials. These are all the things you'll need. A frame, a staple gun, a squeegee, ink, tape, emulsion, some fabric, some gloves, your design, and a black plastic bag. And there's probably some things I forgot, but you'll see them as they come up. Uh, Alright, so to start, you'll need some sort of frame. You can buy a screen printing frame that's already done. It has the mesh and everything. Um, I live in New Zealand at the moment, and they're very expensive here. So I thought I'd make it myself, because hey, why not? It seemed like a good challenge. <laughs> there's a few ways you can make the frame base. One, you can buy wood, and then nail or screw or glue them together to make this kind of shape. Two, you can find maybe old picture frames that have a flat edge on one side. That would work as well. Or three, what I did, you can buy canvas for painting. You can take out the staples and just use the wood. The local art store was having a sale on these kind of things, so I was like, meh, why not? So now I've taken out most of the staples, but I'm just gonna finish doing that. So now you have your frame. Sweet. The next part is adding the screen to the frame. I went to the fabric store and I bought this Swiss wall. <laughs> it's curtain fabric. It's very mesh and see-through and very fine. Now I will cut out the right sizes and staple it onto the screen. If you're using a frame from a canvas, make sure to staple into the side that is not the flat side. So in my case, this side is kind of diagonal um, wood going down and the opposite side where the screen is, is the one that you need to have completely flat. Now that you've stapled one side, you want to make sure that you staple all the rest of the sides as tightly and as evenly as possible. Continue going around until you have something that looks a little bit like this. Well, hopefully better than mine, actually. <laughs> uh, but the screen should be taut on the frame. Now you can cut off all extra fabric. So I finished putting the material on the screens. Um, the back sides look like a very hack job. <laughs> uh, and I've noticed that like this material is starting to fray. So I'm going to do something that I haven't seen other people do, but I feel like it can't hurt. I think it will only be like helpful, but I'm going to put some uh, clear plastic tape over the edges so that it doesn't fray anymore and just kind of keeps it a little bit more secure. <laughs> frames are taped up. I'm doing three because I have two designs and then I'm going to be using the sunlight to expose the frames to the design. So that requires having a test frame. So I just have like this small little one to do a test on. The nice thing about making your own frames is that you can just do a small little one like this and it doesn't have to be perfect. The next step is to coat the frames with the emulsion. I'm using the Diazo Speedball. It comes with this little bottle of sensitizer. This is the thing that makes this sensitive to light. So they come not mixed and you have to mix them yourself. It's like green and weird inside um, and you have to fill it halfway full with cold water and then we'll mix it in here. I'll be using a chopstick and then we will spread them onto the screens. Now, you might be wondering, hey, it looks like you're in pretty bright light. <laughs> The directions specifically state dark room is not needed for this step, so I feel like other videos I watched said you should do this part in a dark room. 
But I'm gonna go with what the instructions say. They do say, however, to wear gloves, so. <laughs> I'm gonna add the water, BRB. Okay, I added the water. I will say it's really hard to tell like how where half is. It's supposed to change color, they say, when it's fully mixed. Um, they make it very clear that it's supposed to be mixed very well, so I'm just gonna shake it like a Polaroid picture. <laughs> bad joke, bad joke. Let's check. Ooh, now it's like a brown color. So now I'm gonna mix it into here. This one is blue. Ooh. And that's before you put the emulsion on, you're supposed to put degreaser on over the uh, screen to get rid of any oils from your hands or just anything on there. I don't have degreaser, <laughs> so in one video I saw they said you could use um, dish soap because that's like also a degreaser, so like a little bit of dish soap and warm water and I cleaned them like that. Next you'll want to pour some of the emulsion onto the screen and then use a squeegee or something similar to spread it out. You want to have a thin, even coat over the entire thing and make sure to get the backside as well. Okay, that part was actually really stressful. I feel like I did not do a good job. Also, since like the small frames, the squeegee that I have is too big, it was just causing so much problem, so I had to get some cardboard. So yeah, now they're drying. You want to make sure that they're drying with the flat side down. You want the inner side part to be the smoothest because that's where you're going to spread the ink. So you got to prop them up on something. But while we're waiting, I will prepare my transparencies. A lot of the things I saw said that it's best if you get two and then put them on top of each other because it makes a darker black. I got these transparencies made at a local print shop. I just had my design on a USB stick. Um, and I took it in and just asked for two copies on transparency paper and it was very cheap <laughs> and easy. So when it's exposed to light, all of that emulsion is going to harden except for the part that is blacked out. So you use two just to make sure it's really dark and that the sun absolutely cannot get through. Or you can also use a light source like you're supposed to. Make sure there's no like big dust particles or anything because you don't want that to burn through as well. I'm going to tape them together and then I can't show you this part because I'm going to do it in the dark room but I'm going to tape them reverse side <laughs> onto the flat part of the screen using a very important clear tape so it doesn't create any shadows or burn through. You can also use a piece of glass to hold it on top. Today is like a really bright sunny day which i had heard that overcast was actually better but you know what you gonna do um <laughs> this other video i found this girl named charlie murray she has this like pdf that you can download where she explains her process using the sun and she does this thing where you like you do a test screen first so this was my test screen then that's how you determine how long it's gonna be i ended up leaving them out for about 40 seconds i'll link her video below and you can download her pdf and learn how she does it and stuff. So first what you want to do in the dark, is use a black plastic bag and take your design and your screen, take it outside, take it out of the bag, put it on top of the bag, put that timer on, wait for however long you think you should wait, put it back in the bag, and then wash it immediately with water. And you want to use something that has like a spray kind of action. And if it's not coming off, you can use like a coarse uh, scrubby brush. I use a toothbrush and it worked great. Oh my gosh, they worked! Ah, I'm so excited. And then after you wash off your design, then you put them back out into the sun to harden completely. But at this point, you can leave them out as long as you want. It doesn't matter because the part that you wanted off is already off. So here are my completed screens. So I will say though that I didn't spread the emulsion very well, <laughs> as you can tell. Also, I think I could have left them out in the sun longer because you can see where I scrubbed away and I don't think that emulsion should have come off like that. So... 
Oh well. So the next step is to put tape around the edges and if you see any like holes, like I see some right here um, that came through, so just tape those up so the ink doesn't go through. Okay, so turns out I definitely think I should have left it in the sun longer. This is all part of the fun when you're doing a DIY for the first time on YouTube because look how much uh, tape I had to put on. Can you see it? Can you see it? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much covered in tape because there were tons of like really small little holes. But we're gonna try this anyway, see how it goes. <laughs> the next thing you wanna do is put like a piece of cardboard or something underneath your shirt. Uh, the next thing you're supposed to do is take some handy dandy clamps and clamp the screen onto the shirt onto a table. I don't have clamps. Let's try it out anyway, because why not? So I'm going to line it up. You'll want to spread some ink over the top of the screen and then take your handy dandy squeegee and flood the screen first with one go and then Pressing really hard, you're going to want to go back the other direction and make sure the whole thing gets some ink. Moment of truth. Oh my god, it worked! Ah! Okay, and full disclosure, I did get a drop of ink right there. Also, there's some like random ink spots down here. And actually, that might have just been from me being excited about it. So this one will be mine. Um, I definitely won't try and sell this one to anyone. I think it can only go uphill from here though, you know? I feel like I have a good uh, start. The next thing we want to do is heat set it. The ink that I'm using, which is Permaset, says to use an iron, so I'm going to use an iron. And then the ink will be on there, like it'll be good to go. Wash it, dry it, do all the stuff. <laughs> Alright, and we've got the finished shirt! If I put my hair just right here, you can't see this one spot. <laughs> All in all, for my first time, I think, I mean, the design is on the shirt, however, I did not let the screen burn for long enough in the sun. I don't think after this one the screen is really usable, I think I have to redo it all again. Which is fine, you know, that's okay. <laughs> That's all part of learning and DIYs, you know? You gotta learn how to do it. So if you're one of my usual viewers, uh, sorry, unfortunately, um, I won't have any t-shirts to sell for a little while till I get this sorted, because I don't want to sell you a crappy t-shirt. If you're not a usual viewer, well, thanks for sticking with me this long. If you like this kind of DIY, video let me know and i'll do more of them but thanks for watching and if you're not subscribed then subscribe and if you like this video um give it a thumbs up i'll see you guys next time Bye.